है Here's a gun. Remember, you have to shoot it without smudging the prints on that handle. And the key. You've got the rubber gloves? Well then, everything is all clear. Yeah. What about you publishing my book? Yes, of course. I was just coming to that. Well, your first advance, Eddie. One thousand dollars. We'll uh, draw up a formal contract in a couple of days. No kidding? That's great. You're smart, Mr. Greenleaf. You're gonna make a fortune out of my book. Three years I've been working on it. Three years. I've described every single kind of explosive there is and how to make it. Well, that's your genius, Eddie. Your sort of do-it-yourself book will undoubtedly change the world. Yes, yes, that's right. Those poor kids, those amateurs, planting bombs and blowing themselves up. They're really going to learn how to do it right for me. Believe me, I know. I'm sure you do. You're doing a great thing, Mr. Greenleaf. We both are, Eddie. But remember... You have to come through for me tonight. Oh, man. He's dead already. If you don't mind a little less conversation, a little more service at the end of this bar. Double scotch and soda, sir, just what you ordered. What do you take me for some kind of a fool? This tastes like butt. Hey, hey! Come on! Come on. Go on tonight, me. sir. Oh, really? <laughs> I'll be the judge of that. Let go of me. Here. Buy yourself a personality. Let go. Stop manhandling me. Stick and joy! Hmm. 
You and this place deserve to be in the valley. Morning, Agnes. Yesterday's pages look okay. I found a few others you can fix up here. Let's pick it up from page 479, and that should wrap it up for the first draft. Conrad held Li Chen close against him, feeling her soft, trembling body yield to his embrace. He knew that this must be love. And if it wasn't, it would have to do until the war was over. Conrad prowled the room looking for the inside of his personal tunnel. There was no sleep for him that night. It was only 60 miles to Saigon, he thought. But how far could he ever put Saigon behind him? But there was only one real decision to be reached, and it had been formed a long time ago. He knew which way he would have to turn. Out across the plains was the monastery of St. Ignatius, offering him hope and a chance to wash away the wounds of war that had brutalized him. He turned to look at Li Chen sleeping on a straw mattress, her tiny body heaving fitfully. He would not wake her. It was better that she find him gone. Saigon and the fighting was far away. From the window. What's the matter with you? Hey, fool! Look what you've done to my car. Oh, I'm so sorry. I what didn't we've see done you. to your car. Look what you've done to our car. Tell him, Ralph. Oh, uh, well, sir, uh, you, you, you did pull out without looking. You... What? That's ridiculous. You, Ralphie, are a fool, you're a liar. And you're a menace to your fellow man. Don't take that from him, Ralph. And you, madam, shut up. All right, here, Ralphie. I suggest you call that number the first thing in the morning. That's my insurance agent. He'll know how to deal with you. Sir, in your condition, I should call the police. Madam, in your condition, I'd call a plastic surgeon. <laughs> in the park because there's a sign out there that said no parking in the street step out of your car please sir certainly certainly not i am on my way home officer so would you kindly shut that door please please uh step out of the car sir if you want me to get out of this car officer or sergeant you're gonna have to drag me out uh, Fred. <laughs> Need help, huh? Just one more thing. <laughs> 